Hello, I'm Kurt Von Dack. Welcome to the University of Virginia College of Arts and Sciences webinar. By design for 200 years, this university has been home to an exploratory elective curriculum in which students seek knowledge from across the breadth of the disciplines. You have some jobs as you prepare for fall course enrollment and as you prepare for your life here at UVA. You need to, if you have not already, um, activate your UVA email account. Complete your curriculum module so that you understand the details of your curriculum as you explore the course offerings. Check your UVA email daily. Make sure you are checking in with the new student portal and completing the tasks there and start learning how to use SIS. Search for classes, browse for classes, put cool classes in your shopping cart. We hope you have academic questions. Your first year journey begins really soon. So we wanna set you up with some information and advice as you explore. If you need advice at any point during your four years at UVA, we recommend you stop and see us in Monroe Hall. The Monroe Hall team can answer your questions. We're the home of the undergraduate advising and administrative offices. We are filled with deans and staff who are available weekdays during the semester to answer your questions and give you guidance. Come see us. We will see you during your enrollment appointment at your summer orientation session. Between now and your July summer orientation session, you again need to complete your curriculum module. Check the new student portal and complete required tasks. Follow instructions for pre-enrollment surveys in June. Learn how to use SIS and put cool classes into your shopping cart. At your July enrollment appointment, when you're here for orientation, ask deans and cur current UVA students questions. Remember, enrollment is at least a two month process. When you complete the pre-enrollment survey, you're not done. When you enroll in classes, while you're here in July, you are not done. You will not be done till the end of the first week of classes. This is the next four years of your life. So again, before July, load different classes into your shopping cart. Know that you may not be able to enroll in all of your top choices in July. That's okay. As you build a schedule, aim for balance. Some large lectures, some small seminars, and a mixture of disciplines. Build your schedule around any classes that you were pre-enrolled in. So once those have populated, use that as the baseline for building your schedule. Again, your schedule will not be complete until early September. Remember at all times, be flexible. Change in patience are required as you make curricular choices and explore. Discovering new and interesting courses is all about why you are here. Trust me, you'll be glad you did it. Explore the elective curriculum. Do you hear a theme here? But we want you to pay attention to two requirements that we think are important for first year students to at least be paying attention to. The first is rhetoric for the 21st century. This is the first year writing requirement path. Every student at UVA must complete the first writing requirement in residence at UVA. You can check the online curriculum module that you have already explored for placement rules. And uh, some of those are listed here, but simply if you need NMR 1505, 1506, start with 1505 in the fall. Most of you will be uh, scheduled to take NMR 1510, 20, or 30. If your last name begins with the letters A through K, you'll be pre-enrolled for the fall. So you'll already know about it and have it in your schedule before you arrive in July to add additional courses to your schedule. If your last name begins with L through Z, Nothing to worry about for NMR 1510, 20, or 30. You'll enroll in it for the spring semester, and that won't happen until November. If your first writing requirement plus, consider a range of 2000 level classes that you see listed here. If you're a student athlete, simply remember, enroll in NWAR in your non-competition semester. The other requirement, not one that you must start or complete in your first semester, but one to pay attention to because it can take up to four semesters to complete. This is your world language requirement. Placement is based on your SAT2 or your UVA placement results. 
know that scores from AP, higher level IB, SAT2, or UVA placement may earn you exemption from the requirement. Exemption is not credit. It simply means you've demonstrated a proficiency in the language sufficient to have met the intermediate level of the language here. Dual enrollment credit that you completed during high school does not fulfill this requirement. You must complete UVA world language placement, again, unless you took an SAT2 language exam and your score indicates um, that you've completed the requirement or where your placement would be. It's also an opportunity to consider starting a new language. We have 17 or more languages offered every year. Great chance to explore. New student portal. I'm pretty sure you've all visited it already and that's how you ended up here. Good job. Keep checking it. You should have already completed the first five tasks. The sixth will be available in mid-June and this is just keep this date filed away. There's a future webinar uh, that will help explain what you're going to do in more detail when you get here in July. And uh, we hope to have some SIS tutorial videos for you as well. As you think about class, classes, consider taking a College Advising Seminar, COLA 1500. These are one credit graded classes where the person teaching them is your faculty advisor until you declare a major, which for most of you won't be until the end of your second year. So it's a great way to get a new advisor. It's a great way to get a really committed advisor. And it's a really cool class that won't stress you out during your first semester. And you'll explore everything here at UVA with 17 other first years. So you'll meet new people and you'll have a great place. We cannot recommend these enough if they fit your schedule. Ask questions and collect advisors. I'm not going to read through the list you see here on the screen other than to say your first stop when you have questions about your academics and where you're going here should be the association dean and our Monroe Hall team. But there are lots of other offices available for you and you should learn where they are. And again, a COLA advising seminar may introduce you to some of them, but this is a great way to get to know the university. I have some advice. I think you already know what I'm going to tell you. Attend the June 28th enrollment webinar. You'll see this as one of your um, tasks coming up in June. When you are here in July, ask questions, talk to your deans, talk to the student experts who are here. They can help you. And at all points, no matter how excited and stressed out you are, I want you to hear me, my voice going, relax and be flexible. This is a two plus month process. What happens in pre-enrollment or happens in July does not determine anything. And part of what you're learning how to do is accept this reality and learn how to navigate it. It's easy. Lots of people have done it for decades and decades here. Remember, explore. 52 departments, 65 majors. There's something new, something you've never thought about before available for you here. And there are really cool classes in all of those departments. Seek balance in that schedule. Don't take five classes in a single discipline. Don't take all science and math. Don't take all history or politics. Spread it around a little bit as best you can while working on the things you think you need to do in your first two years. And again, build your schedule over the summer around the courses you are pre-enrolled in. So let's come back. I said there are deans, and you've only met me. Let's meet the team. You'll be assigned a dean later in the summer. Don't worry about it. We'll all be on hand when you come here in July. And we all hold weekday office hours during the semester. And we even offer weekday afternoon drop-in advising sessions where you don't need an appointment. You just pop into Monroe. And you can usually get in to see a dean. And you can also very quickly turn around and schedule an appointment with your assigned dean. So we want you to know Monroe Hall, know our staff, know where it is, and come see us. Let's go through the deans quickly. Mark Hadley in Religious Studies. Melissa Frost, Spanish. Carlin Ludke, Women, Gender, and Sexuality. Sean Lyons, Middle Eastern Studies. Corin Fox, Philosophy. Elizabeth Osment, music. Aaron Aker, philosophy. Sarah Cole, English. Kevin Rose, religious studies. Rachel Most, anthropology. Shilpa Dave, media studies and American studies. And then you have me, Kurt Von Dack. Students call me KVD. 
It's easier than trying to spell that name. I teach in history and American studies, and I'm going to invite two of my colleagues to join me right after this video ends here in Zoom so we can answer your questions. And those two people are Sandy Seidel, who teaches in biology, and Connie Chick-Smith, who teaches in English. So thank you so much. We are thrilled you are here, and we look forward to taking your questions. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Dean Seidel. Welcome, Dean Smith. Um, before we get going, I'm going to just answer a quick housekeeping question that has already been asked for everyone attending. Yes, this video is being recorded, um, and we will post it both in the new student portal and on our student checklist at college.as.virginia.edu. So um, if you really dream of listening to me drone on for 15 minutes, you're going to have many opportunities to do so. But I'd really like to start fielding your questions. So I'm going to start asking my wonderful colleagues some questions. So first question, you said to add cool classes to my shopping cart. How do I find cool classes? Dean Seidel, Dean Smith. All right. Welcome everyone. I am um, Dean Sandy Seidel. So let's get started. How do you find cool classes? Um, all uh, you will use class search in SIS. Um, and there are many ways that you can um, search for class. There are many ways that you can search for classes. Um, my suggestion is just to use class search and do a little experimenting with the search tool. Um, and, and if you don't know where to look for classes, uh, you can look for classes using the course subject codes um, that you will find uh, in the, the directory um, and also in the new student guide. And as a note, you can also browse in SIS, so you can browse classes too. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple ways to do this. And this is something you should be exploring um, now just to get a handle on it. Uh, you will later have your shopping cart come available in June and be able to begin loading classes into it. Um, but for, for the time now, uh, just learn how to find classes and learn what those subject codes are. Um, another question for both of you. Do I need to take the same language that I took in high school? That's a great question, KVD. I think that is an individual choice, actually. Some of you fell in love with the language that you started in high school and would like to take it to the next level. Why not? Some of you um, were not interested in the language because the one you were interested in wasn't offered at your high school. This may be a phenomenal opportunity for you to start something fresh. So the answer may be different for, for each student, but definitely it's worth considering. Does it matter which orient, orientation session we sign up for this summer? Oh, that's a, that's a very good question. <laughs> Everybody can um, re remain, remain calm and know that um, from orient, orientation session A through K, we, uh, we will hold seats and release seats in classes at each session. So whether you come to the first session or whether you come to the final session in July, you will have equal opportunities to enroll in classes. Our classes first come first serve when we are enrolling in classes between now and August. It's like a trick question. I'll answer the first part. You're going to get pre-enrollment surveys where you'll have an opportunity to be automatically added to some classes. This is a great opportunity when you do that to say, ooh, there's a class that sounds really interesting. You add it and you'll be enrolled in it. So you'll already be in classes when you get here in July. You don't need to grab a seat in those classes if you're not interested in them, but it's a good opportunity to pick some. And then when you get here in July, what's it look like? 
Another another good question, KVD. <laughs> yes, students students are going to come in. They're going to work with all of all of the deans and student orientation leaders. And then yes, as as seats are are released for that day, some classes will not be available um, at the end of the day. But you know what? That's perfectly fine because students are not done with creating their schedule in July. Students will continue to build their schedule in August and all the way through drop ad, uh, which is, uh, which, and through the first weeks of class. So plenty of time um, to, to make schedule changes. Wonderful, thank you. Can we now switch to a couple of questions about majors? When, how do I find out about majors and when do I pick a major? Well, there's a couple of ways to do this. Let me first say that uh, most students identify and select their major in their fourth semester. So that means you have time to do that thing KVD was talking about called exploration, right? Those topics that are just, um, you know, the it topics for you, you can begin to take classes in those areas and get more information to see if that's the path that's calling your name. But certainly, you can um, declare your major in your fourth year. And when in doubt about your major, have a conversation with your association dean. They will be uh, more than happy to introduce you to some of the dupes, directors of undergraduate programs that can give you details about each major in the college. So it's a process, but when in doubt, check in with your association dean. That's wonderful. Thank you. And as a note to everyone, you should be bookmarking the Undergraduate College website in your browser now. Uh, from that homepage, you can make one click to majors. And then from there, you'll see the entire list of majors and you can click on it and it'll take you to the departmental websites. So this is also a great way to explore and begin looking at what does it mean to major in psychology or cognitive science or anthropology, et cetera. So can we shift a little bit now too to talk briefly uh, about the new curriculum? I'm really excited. I'm gonna put this to you, Dean Seidel. Can you talk a little bit more about the engagements classes? I can absolutely talk about the engagements classes because I teach one. <laughs> I teach um, an ethical engagement. And what I really love um, about the engagements pathway is that it's an opportunity for first year students, for new students to take classes, small, small classes and be in a room with a faculty member and other first year students. This is a unique opportunity to build community among the first years and um, to have access to some really very interesting classes and great teachers um, throughout the first year. Thank you. Ah, this is this is a good question. How can I know which classes meet gen which meet the general education requirements? One of the great things, KVD, about hanging out on SIS and getting familiar <laughs> is that you can read the detailed description of every class. And um, the information is written so that there is no guessing. You will understand if it satisfies first writing or some other general education requirement, it is all there in black and white for you. And playing around with SIS and getting more and more familiar, that will definitely help you in uh, answering this question. But no, that's a great question. It's wonderful, thank you. And, and you can also use the um, search function to search by requirement to see what classes are offered that semester. So that's another good way to do that. And that should be part of what you're all doing now. Uh, I'm going to just quickly answer a question about what's the difference between enrollment and pre-enrollment. Pre-enrollment is a survey. You'll receive, you'll receive surveys for pre-enrollment. They'll list classes that are uh, large and often taken by first years. And if you see one that you want, you can, you can pick it and you'll be enrolled in it before you get here. So that's pre-enrollment. Um, you need not choose any classes from it if, you, if those are, none of those classes look interesting to you. And we recommend doing that. Only pick classes from the list if you actually want to take them. Um, 
And then enrollment is what you're going to do when you're here in July. You will sit down, you'll have a two hour window, you'll be on your computer or your smartphone or your, your tablet, and there'll be deans and students on hand to assist you, but you are going to do uh, some enrolling while you're here on top of whatever you were already pre-enrolled in. And then you'll continue to build the schedule in August. And then uh, the fun part is, when classes start, everybody rearranges their schedule. But you'll you'll be you'll be fully primed and ready for that. If you uh, have done pre-enrollment, you've explored, figured out how to use SIS, you'll be in good shape. Oh, this is a good question. How do you know when you are enrolled in a class? At what point are you guaranteed to be in the class? Oh, Kurt, that's KVD. That's an that's an excellent question, and it really builds on the pre-enrollment survey. All the students now have access to that pre-enrollment survey. It's in their task list, and if they want to watch a video about the pre-enrollment survey, they can come to our webpage, the new student checklist, and watch a really wonderful video that explains how to how to complete that pre-enrollment survey. Once the pre-enrollment surveys are, 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 digest, are digested, students will be enrolled in classes. And the way they're going to know that they're enrolled in classes is that they'll see those classes in their schedule in their CIS Student Center. So when you see that you're enrolled in a class, it is going to be in that class schedule in, your, in the CIS Student Center. Very exciting. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> I like this question, the enthusiasm here about completing everything in your first year. Should students try to take all seven disciplines in their first year? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask both of you to follow up. I want to start with by simply saying, right, the beauty of this is if you are taking classes offered by the College of Arts and Sciences, you will almost certainly be completing discipline requirements. We don't offer underwater basket weaving. You can't take a bunch of nonsense credits. You can't take 15 credits of physical education classes. So simply by enrolling in college classes, when you enroll in them, you're gonna learn two things, right? You're gonna know as you enroll in them which requirements they meet. And then you're going to learn to read your academic requirements report in SIS, which is tracking your requirements. And as soon as you enroll in a class, it's going to appear where it meets a requirement in there. But do, do you both have advice uh, about, I think the deeper question there about, should I just try to complete all my gen eds in my first semester or first year? KVD, I say absolutely not. What happened to the adventurous side of you, right? How about exploring that topic that you long had a passion for and really wanted to know more about? This is the time that you do it. As you said, you'll begin to take courses in the college and everything will be counted for something, but don't try to put that pressure on yourself to complete all of the requirements in that first year. Enjoy, explore. That's what it's about. Excellent, excellent. Oh, we have so many good questions. Next, who should I contact to learn more about pre-health requirements? Oh, that's a wonderful question, KVD. Um, Pre-health, pre there is pre-health advising at, through the Career Center. My suggestion would be to Google UVA pre-health advising. It will land you um, on the webpage for the Career Center's pre-health advisors. You'll be able to sign up for their platform, which is called Handshake, and begin to work with pre-health advisors. I think you're also going to see um, an opportunity for a webinar for, with pre-health advisors um, in June. I think as well, there will be at some point during uh, your orientation session over the summer, there will be one session at some point during those two days uh, where pre-health advisors are there. And I'll add that all of us, your deans, can actually help you with this. We do a lot of helping students think creatively uh, about how to complete their um, pre-health requirements while at UVA. So make sure you also befriend and get to know, collect an advisor in your dean. Oh, these are such good questions. Uh, I'm gonna just quickly field this one. Um, if you are interested in transferring 
to a different school, you should be talking to that school now about what the transfer cycle looks like. In most cases, you'll enter as a college student, you'll complete courses in the college, and then either December or January, you'll have an opportunity to apply and transfer to that school. And while you're here, you're still a college student, so you'll have to carefully navigate how you complete some of their required classes while also not completely abandoning the college because you're not guaranteed that, that transfer until your grades are in. So that's easy to do. It's not anything to worry about now other than reach out to the school you hope to transfer to and talk to them about what their process looks like. Okay. Oh, this is, this is a hard one. I don't know that we can answer this, but I'm going to throw it out there to see how the two of you feel it. What are some of the best, most interesting classes you have ever taken? Well, yeah, I've never taken a class. Biased, so you go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go, Connie, go. I was saying, you know that I'm biased. So I was going to yield the floor to you because the most interesting classes I think are available are colas, right? <laughs> because you get it in your first <laughs> semester. That instructor is your advisor. And part of the mission of the COLA is to help acclimate you to university life. So you get guest speakers from the library and international studies and just all departments all over the university, I think. But again, I'm biased because I teach a COLA, right? I think those are some of the best courses at the university. And, and I'll add from my perspective, um, the embracing exploration and just taking a class because it looked cool and it didn't meet a requirement is absolutely uh, some of the best classes I ever took happened because of that. Um, and right, I tell these stories to students when they come to my office um, on a, uh, at least once a semester, I regale them with, I took this class and it was really cool. Um, so please explore, embrace that freedom that you have here. Ooh, another good question. How will we know what credit will transfer to the college from our high school or dual enrollment? Uh, a, very, a very good question. And this is another question that um, students, let me direct you to our college webpage, the new student checklist. On that, on, on that checklist is a link that will take you to the transfer credit evaluator and you can evaluate your own dual enrollment credit so that you know what credit what UVA credit will be awarded for those um, those courses that you've taken um, through your high school at your local community college. And a note for all of you, it will take some time into the fall semester before all of your various AP, IB, and dual enrollment credits actually populate in CIS. So as long as you know what credit they're going to earn for you, you can make informed choices about what to enroll in. So be patient, learn what those are going to count for, and then make those informed decisions. This is a good question. How many classes does the average student take each semester? AVD, I, I think we should pay more attention to the amount of credits mm -hmm. rather than the number of classes, right? Because we have some classes that have uh, that carry one credit, other classes carry three credits. But we usually recommend for incoming first year students not to be overwhelmed. 15 is usually a decent number to carry as you transition from high school to college, right? We know that we have some really um, studious students coming in and some folks that are anxious, but don't overwhelm yourself. 15 is usually a healthy balance. Yeah, and 15, if you add a COLA and go to 16, that also entirely works as a first year. And so it, it, that's a great answer, Dean Smith. Thank you. Oh, here's a good one. So we're, we're gonna come back to this one more time. So I, I want to go into pre-health or pre-law Will there be advising to consider what classes to take? So KVD, I talked about pre-health and just as there is pre-health advising um, in the Career Center, there is also pre-law advising in the Career Center. So my suggestion for those students is to Google UVA pre-law, land on that webpage, um, and to sign up for the Career Center platform handshake read those web pages and then begin to um, engage with 
pre-law advisors. And I'll, I'll keep adding as the drumbeat. Also talk to your dean because you, you want to get different advice from different people on how to manage all of that. It, it's, it's not as hard as it looks, but it's really good to have people offering different perspectives on how to build your four years with those goals in mind. Ooh, another good one. How do we take the foreign language placement module? Someone called it an exam here, but I want to tell everyone it's not an exam. It's simply a diagnostic tool that assesses your current level of language acquisition and recommends the appropriate course to step into at UVA. This keeps you from walking to a class that you can't possibly succeed in or a class where you're spinning your wheels going, you know, I did this my last year of high school. But how do they do that? An another good question, KVD. And I'll direct our, our new students to the new student checklist on our college webpage where there are direct links to six of the world language placement modules. Um, and then there are links for information about placement for other world languages. And I'll remind students that you can, if as, as you have questions, you can always email askthecollege at virginia.edu and you're probably going to hear from KVD or I or another dean who will reply back to you with information um, to answer your questions uh, so, so that you, 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 know, you know where to find information to make informed decisions. Wonderful. Oh, I like this question. For those people in the engagements pathway, is taking the completing the engagements in your first year and taking a COLA common? Yeah. I guess I'll feel that because I teach both an engagement and a COLA in the fall in the in the fall semester. And and this is this is this is what students get to do when they come to college. You get to you get to explore and look and see what classes um, what classes are of interest to you. If you want to enroll in engagements and you want to enroll in a cola, that is that is perfect. That is perfectly fine. You get to you get to choose the classes that you want to, um, and we're going to support you in those choices. And if you have questions please start communicating with us, your deans. And I think this is a good segue into another question about how are advisors assigned? Usually you get your uh, advisor according to your residential space, right? Your residential living accommodation. So for example, I support students that live in um, Kellogg, Kent and Hereford. Right, so each association dean has a residential community that they support. So I'm sure that information will be available. You're gonna get sick of hearing about this new student checklist and the portal, <laughs> but all of those details will be made available so that you can follow the links and get clarity as the, as the journey, as KVD has said, for this whole enrollment process that two, for the next two months will unfold for you. And can we bore down a little bit here and talk about the faculty advisor, right? The other advising person that every student will be uh, have when they arrive in August. How are that? How how might you navigate that? So I, I'll answer one. If you enroll in a cola, the cola instructor is your faculty advisor, and you're going to get to know them really well over the course of the fall semester. Um, I know every dean you see here has students who took their cola years ago and we still talk to them. So it, it, that's, it, if you're really concerned about having a really healthy advising relationship and you can fit a COLA that sounds interesting in your, into your schedule, that's a really great way to do this. Everyone else will be assigned an advisor. It, it's, it's never perfect, it doesn't matter. We try to assign you an advisor that is in one of the many areas of interest you think you have um, as you're coming on board in the summer. But that's okay. Your faculty advisor's main role is to simply make sure when you enroll for the next semester that you're doing something that makes uh, basic sense, right? You're, you're not taking 
18 credits of engineering courses when you have no calculus background, right? That's, that's that main relationship. If you have bigger life questions, career questions, and academic questions, you want to come back to your dean as Dean Smith started with. So see your dean as the big picture uh, advising resource and see your faculty advisor as the person you meet with uh, once a semester to make sure what you're doing um, makes sense for the next semester. KVD, can I pipe in here and, yes, while I, please. and just I share share my share my advice to the students, new students. I really suggest that you collect advisors. There is not one there is not one person at this large complex university that can answer all of your questions. So while you will have a dean and you will have a faculty advisor. My suggestion is to collect an advising team and have an advising network. You'll have a pre-health advisor if that's your path. You'll have a pre-law advisor if that's your path. If you're interested in one or two or three majors, you, should, you can also seek out advisors in those academic majors. So collect many, many, many different advisors and advisors will give you advice. You'll ask them a question, and if it's if it's not a, a, a question that has an A or B answer, if it's not an, a question asking for information, advisors will share with you their experience, and guess what? Different advisors may make different suggestions for you, um, and then it's up to you to listen to all of that wisdom, consider the experience and the background of the advisors, and you get to make the decision that's right for you. So Dean Seidel's advice is always to collect <laughs> advisors. Uh, a couple quick notes for everyone. If you enroll in a COLA, right, if you do that in July, that person is your advisor. You'll already have an advisor in July. If not, you'll be assigned one in August. And by the time you get here in August, you'll also know which of your deans are your, your deans. You should know that probably by the time you arrive in July. I don't know the exact date, but that happens over the summer. Um, a, a quick housekeeping note. If you're confused about units in CIS, units and credits are the same thing. So um, when, you're, when you're rolling in a class that's three units, that's a three credit class. Great question. Another good question here with this pre-enrollment survey, uh, someone asks, should I pick a class during that pre-enrollment survey that I might place out of? Ooh, that's a, that, you know, that's a tricky question, KVD. Okay. And this, this is why this is only the beginning and why enrollment is a process. This is a choice that each of you has to make because some of you may not have, um, may not have data back from your AP or your I, IB results. My suggestion is that if is that if that and this is my advice and KVD and Dean Smith may suggest otherwise. My advice is if that class is important to you, if that's an introductory class to a major that you're fairly interested in, that you might want to in your pre-enrollment survey secure a seat in that try to secure a seat in that class. But this is why enrollment is a process. If your AP uh, or IB score comes back and you earn credit for that class, you can swap that class during your enrollment appointment during summer orientation session in July, where you can certainly also swap that class for a different class throughout um, open enrollment, which will occur in August through the first week of classes. Yeah, and I would just add, if, if you're not interested in taking the class that you think you might earn credit for, you should not use the pre-enrollment survey to enroll in it, right? Yeah. You, there, there's not, other than that first writing requirement class, right? There's not a single class you must complete at the university. So uh, try to let that go a little bit and find classes that you're interested in and right interest can be it sounds cool or I really hope to do X and this is kind of one of the you know 1,000 or 2,000 level classes in that then that's a good class to take oh gosh here's another pre-health question if I'm thinking about pre-health should I take chemistry and biology in my first semester 
Well, I teach I teach in the biology department, so that's uh, that's a good question for me to respond to. <laughs> um, and this is another question where different advisors will provide different advice. My suggestion is only to take chemistry and biology and consider taking chemistry and biology in the same semester if both of those courses are required for an academic path that you're interested in. And an academic path that you might be interested in would be biology. That said, you can still be a biology major and take either biology the first year and chemistry the second year or take chemistry the first year and biology the second year. What's important to note here, what's very important to note here is that introductory biology is a two semester sequence, a fall bio one and spring bio two. You can take bio two before taking bio one, but for chemistry, you have to take chemistry one before chemistry two, and chemistry one is only offered in the fall, which is why many, many, many advisors might suggest that if you truly are interested in a pre-med pre -med pathway, that you begin with chemistry. But Dean Seidel says, begin with whatever class you're most interested in. Wonderful, thank you. Oh, do I need to take calculus? Is calculus a requirement generally? <laughs> Dean Seidel's just shaking your head no. No, you have a quantitative requirement that requires two courses over four years that have been deemed by the faculty to be quantitative. That does not mean you must take a math class or a statistics class. It's not entirely classes in those departments. So if you are very interested in the quantitative world and you're pursuing a quantitative educational pathway, you're going to knock that requirement out either with AP or IB credit that you brought in, or you're going to complete those courses and you're going to knock it out. But if you don't like, if you're scared of calculus, I know I was when I was your age, um, you, you, there's a way to complete the quantitative requirement that does not require calculus. So, right, it's a quantitative requirement, not a calculus requirement. Oh, what does the T mean at the end of transfer credit, credit such as NWAR 1000T? AVD, hey, those are um, general elective credits that count towards your degree, but they do not count toward uh, general ed and they don't count toward your major or your minor. Again, they will count toward overall graduation, but in those other two categories for the majors and minors and as general ed, not so much. Thank you. So that's important that even though they have the T, they're not useless. They reduce the number of credits you need to complete your degree over four years, right? You need 120 total credits and 108 of those credits must be college credits. Any of these AP credits that come in with the T after them are going to count as college credits. And so they're helping you move toward your degree even though they don't fulfill the requirement. Ooh, this is an interesting question. Is there tutoring available if I need help with the class? A good question, a good question, KVD. There is tutoring in some, but not all, in some, but not all, all classes. There is a writing center, which can help with writing papers in all disciplines. There's a math tutoring center, uh, and some departments will have spe specific tutors for some specific classes. Wonderful. Should we be taking prerequisite courses for certain majors into account while designing our first semester schedule? Or is that someone, something we should think about later on? I love that question because that means you are thinking so far ahead. So if you have a passion for a particular major, then do the due diligence, check out the website, find out what the prereqs are, right? And sure, dip your finger in the water to take the temperature to see if that's the path for you. So sometimes it's those prerequisites courses that really help you figure out if this is my thing or not. 
So certainly keep those in mind, right? But you still have room to explore, right? Nothing takes the place of exploring in those, those early days. So keep that option open as well. Excellent, excellent. Um, can we can can you both maybe briefly speak to the difference between the engagements pathway and the disciplines plus pathway? I'll I'll get us started with that since I teach in the engagements pathway. In the engagements pathway, what's exciting about this, and this is um, this this is I think an important part of the college college curriculum is that students will take the EGMT the engagements classes in their first year. Again, it's a unique experience for to, to build a community of all new students and some, some faculty members that are excited in working with, these, with, new, with new students in these classes. If you weren't selected for the engagements pathway, um, there is the opportunity uh, there's a there's a there's an app there's a web page we can direct you to if you don't want to miss that opportunity. If you were placed in the disciplines plus pathway, this means you will not take the engagements. Instead of taking the engagements in your first year, you will take three additional disciplines classes um, to fulfill those that require those requirements. And there's really no, there's not one pathway better than the other. They're the same number of credits. It's not, not an issue which one you're in. And if you're interested in switching into the engagements, that's the only, if you're in the disciplines plus and you want to go to the engagements, you can request to do that. Um, and I believe in the Q&A, we've already provided a link uh, about that. But you can, you, if you just go to the general education website for UVA, you can find the answer. I, I want to come back here and I, I'm just going to kind of do a soliloquy. I think this is easier because I want to talk about this pre-enrollment survey. We're kind of in the weeds on classes. We really want you to be thinking about this. This is a good opportunity to have already thought about what are the classes that look neat. You're going, to, you're going to get the pre-enrollment survey. You must complete it by June 2. And you could be enrolled in anywhere from one to four uh, courses, depending on your general education pathway as you go through this. So, right, if you're in the engagements, you're going to be enrolled in two engagements. You may also get another popular first year course. And if your last name begins with A through K, you're probably going to also choose one of those NWARs. So you could come to summer orientation, depending on which of the categories you're in and what you choose, you could come to orientation already in uh, right close to 10 credits. So it's, it's really gonna vary student by student. It doesn't matter. What matters is choosing classes by June 2nd through that survey if you see classes on that survey that you really want to be in. Um, the classes on the survey, right? It's not all the classes at UVA, but it's ones that are really popular with first years. So there are large classes, there are small classes, there are those NWAR first writing classes, and there are the engagements pathway courses, which the majority of students at, uh, coming in this year are in. So, um, I just know, think about your choices really carefully as you go through that. It's okay if later you decide you don't like what you chose, right? You get to change your schedule. This is the dirty secret that you will only know after you've gone through it. You're going to change your schedule. Everybody does. The uh, week before classes start and the first week of classes, at least 10,000 ads and drops each of those weeks because your, your returning students, right? They just finished their semester here. Guess what? They're not in CIS. They're not thinking about their fall schedule. You're gonna meet the orientation leaders in July and about half of them are gonna tell you, I don't even know what I enrolled in. And they're gonna wait. And they're gonna look in August and go, wait, I enrolled in what? And they're gonna change their mind. Or they're going to go to the first class and go, no, this isn't working for me. Uh, or a friend's gonna tell them to come join a class. So that's part of the process is that being open to flexibility and change. It's really at the end of the first week of classes, are you largely in classes you like um, and that you think are ones you want to take? Note that as, a, as first years, you're going to have to be flexible 
you are you might have to take the the morning class you might have to take a, an evening class that's not at your preferred time that's okay everybody who's ahead of you here at uva had to make that choice at some point too so again please use the pre-enrollment survey to take class to pick classes that fit your curricular pathway and look interesting to you um so I think that's really important. And then I, we've, we got one last question before we switch. We want to end with a taste of UVA students talking about their learning here. We think this is a really important note to end on. So the last question before we do this is, what are some criteria to determine if my schedule is balanced or not? I talked about that in the opening video. How might you balance your schedule? I think it calls for a bit of um, self-reflection, to be honest. Did you load up in the sciences because that's your preferred discipline, right? Are you trying something that piqued your interest, right? Have you uh, gone outside the box? Have you talked to anybody, right? To see if you can get some feedback and that somebody I'm recommending would be either your faculty advisor or your trusted association dean. Right? I think these are some very simple checks and balances because in your mind, it may be wonderful that you have six STEM courses as I clutch my pearl saying that, right? That you would dare have six STEM courses in one semester. And it may seem fine to you, but when you share that information with this community that you're building, you could get some feedback that will really help you see things in a different light. And I think that's some of the advice that Dean Seidel has given, that you're collecting these folks, utilize them from day one. They're happy to be of service. Dean Seidel, do you want to add anything on balanced schedule? I think it's a great question. Yeah, I mean, uh, to me, to me, a balance a balanced schedule it includes classes in in different subject areas. It includes uh, it includes classes that are large and class and classes that are that are small, um, and yeah, and just a variety, especially in the first two years when exploring to find an academic home, it's so important to try different, different disciplines, to try different disciplines out. Take that cool class in anthropology or that cool class in, in art history, even if you think that you're going to be um, a biology major, because you might just pick up a second major or, um, e or even a minor or Again, um, some something that is important and really um, opens opens your heart. And, and I'll add, right? I, I'm a historian. I tell students every semester, don't take four or five history classes. Doesn't matter how much you love history, you're probably not going to love that semester. So balance is just as Dean Seidel described, right? A, a selection of disciplines. It's not a bullseye on a target. It's a general feel that you kind of know when you look at your schedule. So if you have somehow enrolled in 16 credits of biology, you have, you're not balanced, right? But if you have a mixture, you maybe you're in biology, you have your NWAR, you have your engagements, and then you pick up a psychology class, right? That's, that's a, an example of balance. And I think with it too, it's pay attention to class size, right? Most of you are coming from high schools that are a lot smaller than UVA. And you're gonna love it when you get here, but it's gonna feel like a bustling city that first week. And it's really exciting. It's my favorite time of the year is um, the, the, the first couple of weeks where at class pastime, you can't literally walk anywhere without just joining the flow of students going to and from buildings. So know that that means you want to look at your schedule and go, am I also in some small classes? Good news. If you're in the engagements pathway, you're going to be in two small classes. If you're in your NWAR, that's a small class. If you're in a COLA, that's a small class. If you're in a language, that's a small class. So think about it both ways, right? That it's um, disciplinary diversity and then um, some mixing of sizes. Again, not a perfect target, but think about it that way. And if you have questions about that, these are things you can ask. Because remember, if you pre-enroll in courses and then you enroll in courses yourself when you're here in July, you haven't committed to them. You're just enrolled in them. You have all that time until the end of the first week of classes to change the schedule. And so you'll have lots of time to ask and go, did I get balanced? Does this feel good? And no, 
even if we tell you, yeah, that looks great, you may not find it that way in your first week. And so you should be listening to the experience the first week of class. And I know all of the incoming students on this uh, Zoom webinar right now had this experience in high school where you walked into a class, the teacher started talking, and you went, oh, this isn't going to work. And you were stuck there for the year. That's not how it works here. If you have that experience, you leave. If you walk into a class and you this will happen to you, and right, the, the clouds part and a beam of sunshine hits you and you hear the angels singing, you're in a good class. You probably want to stick it out. So I, I want to wrap it up right there. We're going to just run you one quick video. We really want you to end with our amazing students at UVA. We want you to hear from them what your journey is going to look like and how you should think about it. So thank you so much for joining us. Again, we're going to post uh, this video. So you'll be able to listen to us as many times as you like. And we look forward to seeing you all in July. And let's watch this video of our students. video it mentioned that they still have a higher rate of survival because like that gene still protects them against malaria. We could, we could qualify this and say instead of dying, we could maybe say shorter life. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> but absolutely, but absolutely, it may give, it may give some short term. A liberal arts education, as I've learned through the new college curriculum, is all about creating knowledge and not just receiving it. It should be something that's not only preparing you for a professional study, um, it's something that should be preparing you for life. These classes have helped me form a more concrete opinion of who I want to be. So the seminar style course was really different than anything I had taken. A lot of it was us having to consider these challenging questions, these broad fields of inquiry, and really try to learn from our peers and from our professor. It's a different classroom to be in, in the best way possible. It's going to be actually exploring and figuring out real deep questions that might not have an explicit answer. It was just more than just a class in that sense for me. And it really changed the way I like look at my own opinions and the opinions of my peers. It's a good class in which I had to design and carry out a case study research project. It allowed me to put that on my resume. And now I'm working for a professor doing research with him as a second year who's not even declared a major. I think the college fellows are maybe the, the biggest selling point for the new curriculum. The fellows have a lot of leeway and a lot of bandwidth in deciding what their class is going to be about. It's They teach what they're passionate about, and that was something that I personally like adored about this curriculum. We learned about gender um, in my Sarah course class, and that was really fascinating in a way that only she could explain it and that she was really passionate about it. They're really, really accessible and really interested in the whole project that we've been taking on with the first year experience. My first professor was Tico Brown and he's just like the most low key, chill guy. So I was like, oh, you're a, you're a college fellow. <laughs> they really wanted you to come to office hours. They really wanted to be there after class. They wanted to hear our questions. These are really great teachers and professors but they're also really cool people. It's really cool with the smaller class sizes that you get to you know, connect with a professor in something that they're really passionate about. I would say that the new curriculum was worth it alone for being able to interact with these professors. They knew what you were going through and they were, they were on the journey with you, many of you. They were on the journey with you. So like they are also trying to figure out the questions and like it's a collaborative effort. They're trying to let us take ownership of our education, it's, you know, the students sort of drive the class um, in a very large way. And that's been a really cool experience and has made me feel like um, my voice has a really big role in my education at UVA, which I think is phenomenal. It was exactly what I wanted it to be. It was exactly like everything that I could have hoped and ex like dreamed of a curriculum to be like, just because it was so open and everyone was so honest and passionate. That's the reason for me. It's still an open question. And that's what I think is so cool when we think about this stuff, is how many open questions there still are to be, to be addressed. Excellent way to end. We are thrilled to have you here at the University of Virginia. This is still America's first and best enlightenment university. We are looking forward to helping you on your path toward enlightenment. 
enlightenment. Have a great night. We look forward to meeting all of you during orientation in July.